tell me what's new with Avolution. Well, uh, as you know, Avolution does a lot of avionics software. We're trying to bring the experience we have the rest of our commuting, computing environment, the way your phones update all the time, you get new applications. We want to provide an avionics experience that's very similar to that. And one of the cool parts about our business is that we do both government work and we get to bring all that technology that we develop for the Army, for the Air Force, and make it available to the general aviation pilot, which is a great reuse of the tax dollars that you're already paying to be able to help us be able to fly our little airplanes. How long have you been at this? Well, we started doing avionics software in 2015 was when we first showed off our XFS software. Now we look at all these incredibly interesting aircraft that we're seeing here, a lot of urban air mobility, and we are producing the software that is adaptable to address a lot of the kind of unique elements you've got. I mean, if you've got an aircraft with eight electric motors on it, you're not just gonna you know, walk into somebody like a Garmin and Dynon and find something off the shelf. Instead, we've got this stuff that's very highly reconfigurable. We say, think of it as like Excel for avionics. You know, you use Excel to solve lots of different problems. We're able to solve lots of different avionics problems for a lot of different people, all with the same software. So if it's unique, you can do it. Exactly. Our specialty is where the requirements are unique or they're changing, or you might not even know what the requirements are going to be at the beginning. So, for example, we've got a customer called Hydroplane who's doing a hydrogen fuel cell powered aircraft. She's not going to know everything that she needs to know at the very beginning of that. But what we're able to supply is not just a initial pass at what she thinks she needs today, but the ability to easily adapt that without even having to come back to us to be able to make the changes that she needs to, to be able to adapt to what she discovers in the real world. This is a, a little area where we're showing some really kind of out of the box uh, elements of the way this approach to avionics can work. Here, you're seeing the same software that's powering the unpaneled, same software that's powering the 10.4 inch screens here, driving an ultra wide screen. So if you were in something like a Sonics or maybe a, you know something else with a small cockpit, this shows you a really different way to be able to lay out your instrumentation. But among all this, one of the cool features we have is we have this really high resolution bathymetry data and we can use the information about the aircraft that we already have, like its position and its speed and its height above the ground, to be able to provide an alert, in this case specifically for amphibious pilots, to ensure that their gear is up when they're landing on water and their gear is down when they're landing on land. But as opposed to a lot of other systems that you hear every time, this only will produce the audio output in the event that your gear is in the wrong position for what you're about to touch down on in terms of a surface. 200. Raise your gear if you're landing on water. Raise your gear if you're landing on water. And you can, you can customize this for just about any small LSA, it looks beautiful. Yeah, we actually, we use a lot of audio here in this demo to take the angle of attack and present it to you in an audio format. So if you think about, um, if you flew an old 172 that has that kind of old kazoo style, one of the nice things about that is you got a really early indication that there was a stall, but as you got closer and closer, it got louder and the pitch changed. We duplicate that here in software so that the closer you get to the this critical angle of attack the louder the higher pitch but you've got some indication kind of early on before it's critical rather than waiting until the last minute and then telling somebody they got a stall we give you early indications and then when you really are getting to a stall it's like hey stall 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 and then we also give you audible feedback of how far above the ground you are to help you judge the flare outside of just the uh, sight picture of the aircraft. So if you're flying, if you're like me, I, I fly you know, two or three different aircraft, the sight picture is always different between them. But audibly, we can make it sound the same for when you start your flare and when you're just about to touch down, we just give you a backup sensor sound like beep, 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 as you get closer and closer to the ground so you know how close you are in that flare even if you're not familiar with the sight picture in that particular aircraft. Mark, thank you very much. All right, thank you.